Now, the first revelation is with respect to the absolute insufficiency of language to capture the experience. I mean, you are wading into a roiling ocean of meaning with the proverbial thimble. What you bring back in that thimble just can't begin to indicate the immensity of the experience, or its beauty, or its terror, depending. Even to oneself, as an aid to memory, language is next to useless. And the fact that there are landscapes of mind this vast, lurking on the other side of a mushroom, is simply preposterous. I mean, how could that make any sense? The scale of the thing is all wrong. It violates every intuition you have about what it is to have a mind and a body in a world. It's as though we lived in a universe where if you just reached into your right pocket with your left hand, rather than pull out your wallet, you'd pull out the Andromeda galaxy. So the experience is altogether too much. It's like a reductio ad absurdum of one's desire for experience itself. It's as though the cosmos were saying, oh, experience is what you want? You want to see and feel and think? Okay, how's this? And then what follows is a vision so blinding in its beauty and intensity that it shatters your mind. It just unmakes you. Again, I have to admit the poverty of words here. Okay, we have a word for love, for instance. But what's the word for all the love you can possibly feel? and all the love that you recognize that you have failed to feel at every moment in your life up until this moment. What do we call the experience of having that ocean of feeling invade you and fill every empty space in your mind? There really are no words to describe this experience, just as there's no way of snapping your fingers to describe it. Language is simply the wrong tool for the job. The return to normal waking consciousness was a little shaky. To stick with the rocket analogy, there definitely was a sense that my vehicle might break up on re-entry. The first experience that is analogous to actually slamming down into the atmosphere of Earth is the surprising recollection that you've taken a drug, right? You've forgotten that. And this entails the realization that you are someone who was so far gone on drugs that you had no memory you had taken a drug in the first place. And although I'm not a clinician, it seemed easy enough to diagnose myself as psychotic at that point. And then, of course, the door to unpleasant thoughts immediately opens. You had such a good life, and now you've gone and ruined your mind on drugs. How are you going to explain this to your wife, that she's now married to a madman? But again, one is bouncing off the atmosphere here. So the recollection that one has taken a drug gets forgotten and must be relearned again and again as one skids and shudders and then finally comes hammering down through the atmosphere back to Earth. Now, as good as my trip was, at moments like this, one does pray rather fervently to the god of homeostasis. Just let my brain return to its boring 20-watt glow. I'll take an ordinary human mind, thank you very much. But happily, my mind reassembled itself, and there were no stray pieces I could see left on the floor anywhere. And I feel none the worse for wear. In fact, I feel saner than I felt in quite some time. My priorities are straighter. It's like something that needed stretching got a good stretch for about a million years. <laughs>